So what are parameters in Flutterflow? So if you are new, it's something that you're going to be using all the time. So let's take a look at them and see what they are and how we use them. I've got a, an app here. It's a food ordering app. You've watched any of the videos, you'll have seen it before. And if we go to one of our pages here. So basically what we've got, we've got a situation where the user can customize their order. And if we click on the icon, what we are doing in our action to navigate to the next page, which is where they actually cr create the customizations, we are passing what is known as parameters to the new page. So on any given page at the top here, you have got the option to create parameters. So if we go on to the customize page, and you can see we have got some parameters here where you will pass a piece of information from one page to the next so it can be used on the next page in simple terms. So in here we are passing basically a name of the dish that we are customizing. We're passing the cost of the dish, which is there. And then we're passing the image path. So we've got the picture of the dish and we're passing the meal ID. Now the reason we're passing the meal ID is because we can then use that parameter to query our database to get the options that are associated with that dish. So in our list view, as you can see it's got a super base query called ingredients list. That takes the parameter meal ID queries our database for the meal ID. So we are querying the base table ingredients list and our filter we are using is our meal ID in our table is equal to our parameter meal ID and that then will populate the list view with the different options for that particular meal. So you can chocolate sauce or remove lettuce from your burger or whatever it may be so but in terms of parameters that's how what we're doing so essentially in this particular example so when your user wants to customize the meal click on the pizza icon it then passes those pieces of information to our next page which is the customized page which we're then using to display the information here so we've the image so we've got the picture of the meal so we've got the name of the, the dish itself and the cost of the dish the base cost and then essentially we add that to the order and then we can customize the meal based on the ingredients list which is taken from a table we are querying with a parameter to filter out the information we need so that's one example Essentially, that is what we're doing. We're passing information from one page to another so it can be used on the next page. That is basically what a parameter is. Okay, so that's how sort of examples of how we use them. So let's have a look and sort of build a couple. As I said earlier, top right hand of the screen, you've got the parameters option. So you add parameters and add a parameter. You have to give a parameter a name. So we'll, we'll call this one test parameter one. And then you've got the type. So these are the data types you can pass as parameters. You've got integers, you've got doubles, which is a decimal number, strings, which is obviously text. Uh, I think we used all of those in the original example. Likewise, image path we used, and image path, video path, and audio path, all the same. They're URLs to each of those file types. You've got Boolean, which is a true or false value, obviously, and then color, which is self-explanatory. So and after color, we've got some values related to Firebase, which is a document and document reference, dates, times, JSONs, timestamps, lack long coordinates, Google Places. Then you've got enumerated data types, custom data types, which is obviously the Flutterflow data types, Superbase row, and uploaded files. So there's a whole range of those. Obviously, the ones you're going to use the most are going to be sort of the top three, along with the Boolean. They're the ones you're going to be using the most, but you can play around these different values to your heart's content and see how they can benefit you and your app building.
we pick color and then you have is your parameter required yes or no so what happened is when you use your navigation widget to move on to the next page and if it's a required parameter you'll get an error unless you give the parameter a value and if it's not required obviously you won't get the error because it's optional whether you send it or not so that's quite handy because sometimes you'll navigate into the same place from different pages and you only want one of those routes to have the required parameter so it's something that you can play around with and decide whether they're required or not so then you can have a default parameter and also you can set it as a list so it can be for instance in this, in this instance it'd be a list of colors or it'd be a list of strings or integers or whatever so you'd have red blue green yellow in a list rather than just a singular color so let's not choose a color we'll keep it as in fact let's we'll just put that that dark blue color in as our default and then we will confirm that and then if we add just something we can change the color of so that will therefore be a container and we'll sort of stick it in the middle of the screen somewhere so we've got this white container and the color of our white container we want to set from a parameter okay so obviously you can't see at the moment it's white so if we then head to another page okay so excuse the sort of colors and different this is like my frankenstein app is where i just come and do all of my demonstration -y type stuff and if we just add a button center that and we'll center it there so it doesn't look ridiculous and we'll call it color and then if we give it an action we want to navigate to parameters and we want to pass the color let's go for that tertiary color And what happened is then when we click on the button it will pass that parameter to the other page and we should get an orangey colored container in the middle of the page so let's test that out okay so we've got the button there and if we click on that and then we head to the page and we've got an orange box pretty straightforward obviously so what i've done i have made our container sort of 90 percent cut page width and I've added another parameter so we've got an error there because I haven't yet set up the navigation side of it and that's what happened so we've got test parameter 2 which is a string and it's required and because we haven't yet set up the action on the button to pass the value we have now got an error it says required parameter is not yet set on the button action so like i say if you tick and required and you don't set them up you'll get the error so obviously simple enough to fix and what we're doing we've got a text object there that just will take the value of test parameter 2 so then if we go to our page with the button on and we go back into our parameters and we need to just pass a value so it's an orange box and that'll make the error go away okay and then if we reload and see we've got our button again and we just click on the button it's an orange box there we go that's it that's how you move from one page to the other you're going to be using them all the time passing information between pages it's an essential fundamental thing to be able to do with it with flutterflow with any form of app building so hopefully that was useful and I will speak to you in the next video.